Okay, Math Man again. And uh, our last video, we began to take a look at matrix math, uh, linear algebra, some of the characteristics of matrices. And we're going to take a look at a little more um, in terms of some of the mathematical properties of matrices and and how to carry out some of the mathematics. <clears throat> so with that, we're going to turn our attention to <laughs> my grandson. He loves using my whiteboard. Okay, I'm gonna I'll clear some of this out. So last time we took a look at a few of the properties of matrix mathematics. And we looked at uh, scalar multiplication. So we had uh, some value Z multiplied against a matrix A, where A is equal to a1 1 a1 2 1 3 a2 1 a2 2 a2 3 so z a would be z a would be z times this matrix A two one, A two, whoops, A two two, A two three is equal to Z multiplied by all of these. Z two one, Z two two, Z A two three. So that's a scalar multiplication. Now for matrix multiplication, that's a little bit more complex. We have a matrix A. And we'll call it A one 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 two A one three A two one two two A two three and a matrix B equals B one one, B one two, B one three, B two one, B two two, B two three. And again, remember these indices here that we're using. It means first row, first column, first row, second column, first row, third column. So your rows are in this direction. And your columns are in this direction. So we have column one, row one, column one, column uh, two, row one, column two, 
one, three, and then if you had another row, you'd have uh, row two, column one, row two, column two, row three, column, or row two, column three. That's two and three, and so on. That's that's all that. That's all the indices represent. The first number is the row. The second number is the column. And this is considered a two by three matrix because there are two rows and three columns. So that's a two by three. If we had a matrix C equals A11, A12, A21, A22, A31, A32, that is A123, 3 by 2, 1, 2 matrix. So we got 1, 2, 3 rows, 1, 2 columns. And this is a 2 by 3, and this is 2 by 3. So we're going to look at the multiplication of our matrix. We looked at it in the last, we're just reviewing this just for, because this is not a, uh, a given, it's not a very easy thing. So A times B is equal to matrix A, A11, A12, A13, A21, A2, oh boy, A22, A23, times B11, B12, B13, B21, B22, B23. And now, each element hope I have enough room, we multiply each element here going down. So we got A hmm. what we have to do is we have to have Let's see. Each of those have to have a corresponding um, element. So this would be the same as if the bottom, if this was a three by three with bottom row zero. So we have a one one times B one one plus A one two B two one plus zero. And then we have A one one B one two plus A one two times B two two plus zero and for the third we have a a one one b one three plus 
A, one, two, B, two, three, plus zero. And then the second row uh, would be A, two, one, A, two, one, B, uh, one, one, plus A, two, two, B, two, one, plus zero, A, two, one, B, one, two, plus A, two, two, B, two, two, plus zero, and A, two, one, B, one, three, plus a two two b two three plus zero and since there are no more rows we can't multiply anymore and so this would be ultimately we can forget the zeros and this would be the final outcome for this matrix. So let's take a look at another circumstance. Let's take a look at a practical circumstance. We have matrix A um, equals one, zero, one, two, one, 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 zero. And we have B equals one, two, two, one, zero, one, 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 one. And we have A times B times B is equal to, now, well, we got that row times that column. So this is 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 1 times 2. Next column would be this multiplied by that. So we've got 1 times 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 1 times 1. And the last one is 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 1 times 1. Now we go for our second row. So we have 0 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 times 2. And now this one times that. So we have 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1. Last element, we got 0 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1. Now the last row, this times all those columns, so we have 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 0 times 2. Okay, now we have 1, 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0 and 0 times 1.
And now the last element over here, this times that. So we have one times one plus one times one plus zero times one. Now that equals one plus four plus two. So one plus four plus two. This is one plus zero, one plus zero plus one. And we have one plus two plus one. And here we have zero plus two plus two, zero plus zero plus one, zero plus one plus one. And the last row is one plus two plus zero. We got one plus zero plus zero and one plus one plus zero and that equals this is our final matrix. We got five, six, seven, we've got two, and we got four. We got four. We got one and we got two and we got three. We got one and we got two. So A times B is yield step matrix. Now, if we have a matrix A, which is A 2 by 3, 1, 1, A 1, 2, A 1, 3, and A 2, 1, A 2, 2, uh, A 2, 3, and B is A 2 by 3. So we have this is a, this is a two by three matrix, and here we got B one one, B one two, B two one, B two two, B three one, B three two. This is a three by two matrix. And so if we have A times B, and we have A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A3, oh, and A uh, that's it for that one, because it's a two by three. And this is B11, B12, B21, B22. And my arm's getting tired. B31, B32. And that's a two by or three by two, so we have a two by three and a three by two. And we go zip, zip, so that equal to A11, one, 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 B11 one, one plus A12, B two one plus uh, a 
one three b three one. Now this one we got a one one b one two plus a one two b two two plus a one three a one three b uh, three two and here we've got that we've got um, we did this and that we did this and that so we got those two elements now we got this and that so we have a two one b one one plus a two two b two one plus a two three b three one and then for this element we got a two one b one two plus a two two b two two plus a two three b three two and that's the resulting back uh, matrix and it's a two by two matrix Let's take a a um, a look at an example. Okay. Real quick. So we have a is equal to one two zero one 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 and b is equal to one one two zero one one okay so we got a two by three and a three by two and AB is equal to one zero one two one one times one one two zero one one and that's equal to one times one plus zero times one plus uh, one times two and now this element over here zero times one plus zero times one plus one times one see one times zero zero times one one times one now we go down here this multiplied by that so we got 2 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2. Now we get this last element. We got 2 times 0 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1. And our final matrix is 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, 0, 0, 1. This is 2, and 2, and 1 is 5. And lastly, we got 1 and 1 is 2, and that's our final matrix. Now, there's another element to matrices. We've taken a look at matrix multiplication, 
some examples of matrix multiplication. We have scalar multiplication. We have addition. We did addition. Uh, we did matrix mul multiplication. Now we have something called the transpose. So A transpose. So let's say we have a matrix A where it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1. What is the transpose of that matrix? What is the transpose of that matrix? Well, the way I do it, the way I do it is I take a look at a matrix. Now let's let's look at it analytically. We got a matrix A equals A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. All right. What I do is I just rotate that matrix on its side. So then that becomes a column. Okay, so I rotate that on its side and I got A31, A32, A33, A21, A22, A. Two, three. You see, I'm just rotating it clockwise. And A, one, three, A, two, three, A, three, three. Now we're not done yet. We've got to swap these rows. So to get A transpose, we get A. 1, 3, A, 2, 3, A, 3, 3. The center column stays the same. A, 2, 1, A, 2, 2, A, 2, 3. And then this column becomes the last one. A, 3, 1, A, 3, 2, A, 3, 3. And that is the transpose. So, if we start out with the matrix A, A11, A12, A13, this is the transpose of the, oh, what did I do? I, I missed something, didn't I? Um, what did I do? Okay, I got A, A, um, 3, 1, A, 3, 2, A, 3, 3, A, 2, 1, A, 2, 2, A, 3, 3, and A, 1, 1, A, 1, 2, A, 1, 3, and then I've uh, let's see, I move that over there. So this is A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. I just had one column wrong. So this is the transpose here. So it's It's uh, the way I do it is just a matter of rotating in the clockwise direction so that this row then becomes a column. We're rotating at 90 degrees and then swapping columns. Okay, again, 3, 1. If we rotate clockwise, A, 3, 1, A, 3, 2, A, 3, 3 become the first column. This becomes 
uh, A12, A22, A, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, A, A221, A22, A23. You got to be careful while you do any matrix math. A11, A12, A13. So you see how these rows become columns. And then this column goes over here, and that column goes over there. This one stays the same. So A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. And that's a transpose. Now, if you had a 4x4, four four, what do you do? Anytime you got an odd number, you have a middle that remains the same. Even numbers, you have to swap. So if we have a matrix um, A, A11, A12, A13, A14, A21, A22, A23, A24, A31, A32, a33, A34, and lastly, A41, A42, A43, A44. Now, if we rotate that clockwise 90 degrees, these become columns. So you got A41, A42, A. 4, 3, and A, 4, 4. This one is A, 3, 1, A, 3, 2, A, 3, 3, A, 3, 4, A, 2, 1, A, 2, 2, A, 2, 3, and A, 2, 4. A one one, A one two, A one three, A one four. Now this goes over there, and this goes over there, this goes there, and that goes there. So our resulting matrix will be A one one, A one two. A13, A14, A21, A22, A2, A23, A24, A31, uh, A Three two a three three a three four and finally a let's get rid of this arrow a four one a four two a four three a four four and if you notice here this is the original. And this is the transpose, a transpose. If you look at this, if we had a, let's say, a diagonal line, and a diagonal line, If we just rotate around, you see here, this line remains the same. A11, A22, A23, or A33, A3, A44. A11, A22, A33, A44. They're the same along that line. Let's say that's an axis. If we rotate around the axis, that's 
the idea of a transpose. So here we've got A21 below this line, but here we've got it in a reverse position with A12. So we have A12 here, A21 there. On this, we have A21 where A12 is and A12 where A21 was. And we have that all the way along. So we, A41 is where A14 is on the corners. And so you can think of it as rotating around that axis that makes a diagonal through the center of the, of the matrix. But it's harder to remember how to do the positions. I, I like my idea of just rotating this thing 90 degrees, writing down the columns as they are, and then making this the first column, this the last column, and swapping the two interior. And for all even matrix, let's say a 2 by 2, a 4 by 4, uh, a 6 by 6, you're going to have this the symmetry, and so you're you're going to be able to um, do this this little swap trick here on the on odd number. Let's say three by three, five by five, and so on. The center will always remain the same. You never change the center one, and you just flop. You just alter. You know, you take the last one, make it the first column first column, make it the last, like I did here. And um, and you can do that. Now, let's do one more just to show you, because I think it's simpler to keep track. I know that mathematicians like to use the rotation trick. And it's it, for me, it's a little harder. OK, I will keep this example for later. All right, so we have um, a matrix uh, B where it's, um, let's say, oh, I hate writing too much. Let's say it's a, a three by three. B, one, one, B, one, two, B, ah, let's make it a five. B, one, three, B, one, four, B, one, five. Whoops, this is going to be big. B two one B two three one B four one B five one B two two B two three B two four B two five B three two B three three B three four B Three five and B four two B four three B four B four five B five two B five three B five ah, I'm getting punchy here B five four B five five now you rotate this thing 90 degrees clockwise. So you have B, B51, B52, B53, B54, B55, and then B41, B42, B43, B44. Four five B <clears throat> K three one B three two B three three B three four. You see, we're keeping the B uh, three five B two one B two two B two three B two four B two five B one one B one two B one three B four B one 
five. All right. So our final. Oh boy, we're going to have to erase this example. We'll pick up something later. Okay, so this becomes the first column, that becomes that, and then we switch that with this, and this one stays the same. So our transpose becomes B11. You see, instead of being the last column, it becomes the first. So B12, B13, B14, B15, B, okay, now this becomes that, that replaces that, that goes there. B, 2, 1, B, 2, 2, B, 2, 3, B, 2, 4, B, 2, 5, the middle one stays the same, B, 3, 1, B, 3, 2, B, 3, 3, B, 3, 4, B, 3, 5. You see, it just stays in relative position. Only these columns change in this one because it's odd. It's an odd number. Now, this column goes over to that position. So B, B, 4, 1, B, 4, 2, B, 4, 3, 4, 4, B, 4, 5, and lastly, B, 5, 1, 5, 2, B, 5, oh, <laughs> punchy again, B, 5, 3, B, 5, 4, B, 5, 5. And you can see that if we looked at this axis line here, it's the same as the original. Okay, and we've swapped positions here. So B12, which is under B11, under the line, under the axis line, is now above it. It's flipped, rotated, so to speak. And you can see that with each of the positions. My, my little trick of turning it 90 degrees and then swapping columns is much easier to do um, in order to get the transpose. But this is this matrix here is B transpose. So that's what we've got here. That's B transpose up there. So you can do that with with any matrix. One other thing, okay, now we were talking about determinants before. Now, we have our minors, okay, so now we, we I showed you with the 3x3 three three, the special case, the special case, so you got 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Uh, let's say this is a matrix A. And we want to find the determinant of that. And I wrote uh, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And then I copied again 1, 0, 1, and 1, 2, 1, 1. And then I multiplied these diagonals through this. So this is 1 times 1 times 1. So that's 1. And 2 times 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 0 times 1 is 0. And then when we go this direction, those diagonals, we... we um, it's, it's negative, so we have 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and we got 1 times 0 times 1 is 0, 
and zero, 1 times 0 times 2 is 0. And uh, <laughs> it just so happens that the determinant of this is 0. So this doesn't have a determinant. But if I had done this, let's say I got 1 there, and we wrote 1. Uh, let's find the determinant of that. OK. Again, we're going to do this little trick. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, 2 times 1 times 1 is 2. And that is 0. And then these going up in this direction are in the negative. So that's 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And that's 0. And so this is the determinant. And that's equal to 3 minus 2 equals 1. So the determinant in this case is 1. All right, now this is for a 3 by 3 matrix only. If we have a larger matrix, we have to do something, and this is more general. This is a generalized rule for determinants uh, on a square matrix to find the determinant. Okay. Now let's say we have a 4 by 4, all right? So we have matrix A is some A11, A12, A13, A14, uh, B, oh darn, A21, A22, A23, A24, A31, A32, A33, A34, and A41, A42, A43, A44. Now, this is a 4 by 4 matrix. Now, the way you determine the you obtain the determinant you you must take a look at the top row okay you look at the top row and you search for minors so for this particular matrix we have this is going to be a little difficult we've got a 1 1 then scalar multiplies okay we eliminate this column for a 1 1 and this top row so we're left with these three so that's a 2 2 2 2 a 2 3 a, 2, 4, uh, A, 3, 2, A, 3, 3, A, 3, 4, uh, A, 4, 1, A, 4, 2. I'm sorry. Ah, damn, you got to be so careful with these things. A, 4, 2. Because I'm eliminating those, I'm just looking at these. A42, A43, A44. This matrix for this element is the minor for that element. And you alternate. alternate. So the, the, the first one is plus, the second one is minus, the third one is plus, and the fourth one is minus. You alternate plus and minuses. So the next one that we're looking for is A12. So we have minus A12 times the determinant, the minor for A12. The minor for A12 would be this top row minus the column A12 is sitting in. So 
that leaves these three and those six. So we have A to one, the minor here is A to one, A three one, A four one. Now we eliminate that column that one two is in. And so we have A two three, A three three, A four three, and A two four, A three four, and A four four. That's the minor for A one two. Now, because we're alternating plus, minus, plus, minus, the next one is plus A13, A13, multiplied by the minor for A13. So let's write that down here because we don't have it. It's going to be plus A13. A13, we got this row we're eliminating and the row, the column that A13 is in. So that leaves these three or these six and that three. Those are those are going to be the minors for that. So that's A21, A21, A31, A41, uh, A um, Two two, two two, a three two, and a four two, and now this last a two four, a three four, and a four four, and now we're in our last. It's minus because we're again we're alternating plus minus plus minus, so we got a a14, and we're looking for the minor of A14. So the minor of A14 is this. We, we don't take any of those. They all become scalar multipliers and this column. So we're left with those six there. So we have A21, 21, A31, A41. A two two A three two A four two and A two three three A three three and A four three and that's all we we only need four minors and when you calculate the determinants of each of these minors then and multiply them against these scalars here and perform the addition you end up with the determinant okay so this is now we can apply our little trick for three by threes remember three by threes we have that little trick where we can take a column, you know, we got uh, a three by three matrix. And then we write the first two columns over again. And then we go by the diagonals. And we got one plus one plus zero minus one minus one minus zero and this one happens to be zero so there's no determinant but if we made that uh two we made that a two and made that a two we'll have a determinant so here we got one plus one plus two minus one minus one minus two that's ah, zero again <laughs> so if we had a, a zero here maybe that would change it let's see if that changes things one plus zero 
plus 2 um, minus 0 minus 1 minus 2. Ah, God, I'm having troubles finding one that's non-zero, but you know what I mean. We can apply that little trick. <laughs> Let's do this again. 1, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Then we go 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 1. We got 1 plus 0 plus 2. And we got minus 3 minus 1 plus 0. So that's uh, 3 minus 4 equals minus 1. So the determinant of this is minus 1. And we can use this 3 by 3 trick for each of these minors. But technically speaking, you would be looking for the minor on those. And let's take a look at an example of a three by three, you see. So let's take a look at, let's look at a three by three matrix. Now, we're gonna look at a matrix uh, B, uh, is equal B11, B12, B13, B21, B22, B23, uh, B31, B32, B33. And we're going to look for the determinant. Well, my little trick would be to rewrite those columns and then use the diagonals. Well, actually, what we would really want to do, to be technically correct, we go B11 times the minor of B11. So we eliminate the column B11 is in, and we eliminate that top column. So these four elements become our minor for B11. So we have B... 2, 2, B, 3, 2, B, 2, 3, and B, 3, 3. And because we have plus, minus, plus, we always alternate when we, um, when we are looking for our determinant. So our next minor will be for B, 1, 2, and it's negative. So uh, we eliminate that column, and then that top row, so we have B21, B31, B21, B31, uh, and B23, and B33, and then we got plus B13, and we're looking for the determinant of that, so that's, you eliminate that top row and that column that B13 is in, and we have B21, B22, so we got B21, B22, B31, and B32. Uh, now, in order to calculate the determinant for this, uh, we go B11 times B22, B. 3, 3, minus B, 3, 2, B, 2, 3, minus B, 1, 2, times B, 2, 1, B, 3, 3, minus B, 3, 1, B, 2, 3, and lastly, plus B, 1, 3, times B, 2, 1, ah, darn it, B, 2, 1, B, 3, 2, minus B, 3, 1, times B, 2, 2, and that would give us a determinant, and so if we multiply all the way through, we have uh, B11, B22, B33, 
3. Again, these are all equal. Um, minus um, B11, one, one, B32, B23, minus B12, B21, B33, plus B12, B31, B23, plus B13, B21, B32, minus B13, B31, B22. Right. And you notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six calculations. So for three, three by uh, three matrix, we have six calculations. So the four by four, we had four with four three by three matri matri matrices. So we have four times, and, and six happens to be three times two. So we have, uh, or let's put it this way, we'll point it three by two calculations. Uh, a four by four matrix has four, has four three by threes, which are three by two uh, calculations. If we do a five by five, we have how many calculations? We have five times four times three times two. And it turns out no matter how many, how large it is, let's say a six by six is six times five times four times three times two calculations. You can see that we're, we're getting very large. I mean, five by five is 120. This is 24. Six times four is 24 calculations. So getting the determinant of a, um, a large matrix is going to involve a lot of numerical calculations. And as you can see here with a three by three, it has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we call these, when you have a progression, when you progress according to some, some number where you got N and n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 dot 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 to 1. Um, we call that n factorial. Okay, so a factorial is, okay, like for 2, two factorial is equal to 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial equals 4 times 3 is 2 times 1. 5 factorial equals 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I mean, you can leave the 1 out because it, it, it's trivial, but... When you have something like 5 times, okay, so 5 times 4 is 20, times uh, 20 times 6 equals 120. Uh, it, it, it grows very quickly. And so the number of calculations for a uh, matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix is 3 factorial, which is 6 calculations. 4 by 4 matrix it's 24 calculations. A 5 by 5 matrix it involves 120. 6 by 6 is uh, 6 times 120, which is 0, 12, and that's 720 calculations. So a, seven, uh, a, seven, a 6 by 6 uh, matrix is going to involve, that's why computers are more suited for 
matrix math because of the just the humongous number of of uh, calculations that you're going to have to count. So let's take a look at our formula here, and we'll get a we'll try and create a when I try and make numbers uh, arbitrarily, I end up with zeros. <laughs> so uh, I'm a determinant that has uh, that is zero uh, means that there's no, no solution to let's say that there's a simultaneous equation. Remember that example I gave in the very beginning, where there were uh, uh, three uh, simultaneous equations, and I used a matrix to solve it. Uh, to show you the utility. Well, you have to have the determinant for that. And that was only a three by three matrix. So here, let's say we got a matrix B and its elements are two, one, four, one, zero, one, two, three, one. Okay. So let's do it the right way. We, we look at the first element. So we got our first element is 2. The minor of 2 is 0, 1, 3, 1. Okay. Now, because we alternate plus, minus, plus, our next uh, determinant is for 1. And the minor for 1, we got to eliminate the column one is in and the top row so we got one four three one so one four three one and now our last is plus two multiplied against you eliminate that top row and that column we've got one four zero one and these are our minors and you can see we've got plus, minus, plus. And so we got two. And we're looking for the determinant of B. All right. So the determinant is equal to that, is equal to two. And we got zero times one is zero, minus one times three, minus one times. 1 times 1 is 1, minus 4 times 3 is 12. We'll certainly get something out of that. Plus 2 uh, times 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 0 is 0. Or actually, that's a minus because it's going in that direction. And any diagonal in this direction is always negative. And so here we've got. Um, 2 times negative 3, that's minus 6. Um, we got a minus 1 times minus 12, so that's plus 12. And uh, we have a plus 2. 2 times 1 is 2. And so our determinant is equal to 12 minus 6 is 6, plus 2 is 8. Our determinant is 8 for this particular matrix. And uh, now we could show that the, the answer is the same by that little trick I did. Remember, the again, it only works for 3 by 3s. Don't do it for any other matrix. So we have 2, 1, 4, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1. And we rewrite the first two columns, 2, 1, 4, 1, 0, 1. And now we multiply diagonals. We got 2 times 0, 0. Um, uh, 3 times 4 is 12. And 2 times 1 is 2. And now we go in the negative direction. That's 0. Uh, that's uh, 6. And we've got uh, 1. Okay, so 
uh, we have we have uh, 14 minus 5. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, man. what am I doing? That's 6, 7, 14 minus... Oh, I got a, I got a discrepancy here. Did I do the calculations right? Uh, let's see. 0, that's 12, and 2, minus um, 0, 6, and 1. All right, so that is 14 minus 7 equals 7. So where did I go wrong? Let's take a look at that again. Um, I got 2 times 0, 1, 3, 1, minus 1 times 1, 4, 3, 1, and plus 2, uh, 1, 4, 3, uh, whoops, 0, 1. So we got 2 times 0 uh, minus 3 minus 1 times 1 minus 12 plus 2 times 1 minus 0. Okay, that's minus 6 minus um, 11. Or no, that's, uh, yeah, that's minus 11 plus, plus 11 uh, plus 2. So that's 13 minus 6 equals 7. I did a, a math error. So we come out with the same. So uh, the determinant equals 7, and the determinant equals 7. All right, so I, had, I, I just I was a little sloppy with my, my um, basic arithmetic. Okay, so you, you can see. But this is the, the correct way in, in finding the minors. This is just a trick that can only be done. This is this can be only uh, boy, I am awful klutzy. Okay, this okay. This business, this little trick here can only be done for a three by three, only. The right way for any matrix is to follow this formula. So for a four by four, five by four, five, six by six, this is the way to do it. Again, though, you're gonna start running into computational problems because then you're going to have, uh, you're gonna run into a whopping number of calculations that you have to do. But what's nice is that once you get down to a minor that is a three by three, you can use this nifty little trick at it. At the point you've reduced your minors to a three by three, uh, you can use this trick and uh, shortcut your uh, calculations by a little bit and not a lot, especially when you get to the larger, um, larger matrices. But you know what? You're never going to see uh, anything like a five by five in a class because they're just two. There are 120 calculations that you have to make. Nobody's going to do that to you. And anyway, um, I just wanted to show you that because um, first off, um, wanted you to. I never mentioned anything about what a factorial is. I mean, the first time I ever saw a factorial, and this is this goes back to the de uh, deficiency in my math education um, from when I was in grade school. That um, a factorial uh, is just a nifty notation for 
um, a large number of uh, multiplications. So uh, one factorial, uh, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial, five factorial, six factorial. And that's equal to six times five times four times three times two times one. This is equal to five times four times three times two times one. Oh boy, and that's equal to four times three times two times one. Three times two times one, two times one equals one times, well, it's just one. And zero factorial for uh, is one. Okay, just take that as a given right now. Um, it's, it's, a, it, it just is right now. We're, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and prove it at this point. One thing though, I did uh, want to, I forgot to show uh, in the exponent uh, segment of my um, presentations earlier. My daughter just asked me the other day, why is uh, some number raised to the zeroth power equal to one? Why is that? Well, we know that any number n raised to some power, n squared, for example, is equal to n times n or it's equal to n, one plus one. n to the third is equal to n times n times n, which is equal to n of one plus one plus one. Or you could say it's equal to n uh, two plus one, okay? Um, n to the fourth is equal to n times n times n times n is equal to n to the 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, or it could be equal to n 2 plus 2. Well, what is n? n, uh, n well, n is equal to n to the 1. Okay, and n to the 1 uh, can be equal to n to the one plus zero, because one plus zero equals one. And so what does that mean? That means that uh, we have uh, n times uh, n to the zero. And uh, for an n, any power to the first is, is itself, okay? So n to the one is equal to n. Well, if we have n to the 1 is the same as n to the 1 plus 0, because 1 plus 0 is equal to 1, and that means that we have n to the 1 times n raised to the 0, which is then n times n to the 0. And for this to make any sense at all, for n equals n to the 0 times n, this has to be equal to 1. So n to the 0 equals 1. So that's, that's a demonstration of why n to the 0 is, is 1. For anybody who wants that, it's a very simple thing. Any power raised to the 0th power has got to be 1. And that's true for any number. I mean, look look at this. If we have uh, n squared is equal to n times n, right? Or it's equal to n to the 1 plus 1. Or it's equal to n to the 2 plus 0, which is then equal to n squared times n to the 0 or it's equal to n times n times n raised to the zero. And for this to mean anything, 
n to the 0 must mean 1. So it, it's true for any, any, um, any, any power. You can prove it in <laughs> using any power. All right, so we covered a lot of territory. Uh, the last thing with matri matrices that I am going to cover right now is identity matrix. An identity matrix is where we have A, matrix A, times an identity. They usually use I as an identity matrix. When it's multiplied by itself, it's e it, it yields the same matrix. So, in other words, what we got for an identity matrix, matrix, we have a matrix A, which is, let's say, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, okay? Well, the identity matrix has got to be a matrix that yields the original uh, matrix. You see A times A, uh, the identity is equal to A. So it turns out that this is the identity matrix. This one's for a 3 by 3, but it's always a diagonal. For a 4 by 4, it would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, the diagonal. And I'll just demonstrate that to you. Okay, so we have A times I. So 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, 1 times 0 is 0 plus 0 plus 0. Okay, uh, this one is uh, 2 times 0 um, plus 1 times 1 and uh, 1 times 0. And uh, finally, we got 2 times 0 plus 1 times 0 and plus 1 times 1. And now we go to the next, these, to the next row. So 1 times 1, okay, uh, 1 times 0, and plus um, 0 times 0, which is trivial. Okay, so now we go to the next. We got 0 uh, times 1 uh, plus 1 times 1. And we've got 0 times 0. And finally, we got 1 times 0 plus 1 times 0 and 0, 0 times 1. And then last, we've got 1 times 1 plus 3 times 0 plus 1 times 0. And we have 1, 1 times 0, uh, 3 times 1, and 1 times 0. Lastly, we have... 1 times 0 plus 3 times 0 and plus 1 times 1. And when we reduce these, again, this is a matrix. We reduce these. We've got 2, 1, 1. So far, so good. One, one, zero, and one, three, and one. 
and we can see that those two matrix matrix matrices are the same. So when this matrix is multiplied against this matrix, it yields the same matrix again. And so this is called the identity matrix. And again, it's simply the ones down the diagonal of the matrix. So for a uh, two by two matrix, uh, the, the identity matrix would be that. Uh, for a three by three, we saw already, that's our three by three, for a four by four, we, I already showed you, and there are one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. That's a four by four. Uh, identity matrix five would be similar. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 and so on. You get the idea. It's just uh, taking a a big toll on my wrist to write all this stuff. So this is an awful lot of our matrix algebra. Um, I hope it's been beneficial to you. Um, let's just make up a, a problem. Okay, now, in uh, electrical engineering, these types of problems arise. Uh, in circuit analysis, you end up with the systems of equations when you have voltages at nodes. Let's say you got, you know, some kind of a battery, and then you got, you know, a resistor, and you got a resistor, and you got these... And you got these um, nodes at this point, and you got, you want, you know, you got a V1 uh, and a V2, uh, V3, V4, and so on. You end up with these systems of equations that you need to solve um, in circuit analysis and or even in uh, mechanical engineering, uh, you can have equivalent systems. So it's funny how in engineering, um, how many mechanical systems are uh, equivalent to um, uh, electrical engineering. It's really, really quite, quite something. Oh. So let's take a look at a system of equations again. So we have, oh, 2x plus 3y minus 4z um, equals 3. x minus y plus 5z equals 1, and 3x minus 2y minus z equals 6. Totally arbitrary, but let's say we were given this is a problem for us to solve. Well, I could try to find a way to eliminate, you know, um, these these uh, variables, you know, our variables x, y, and z, in terms of one another, and then solve for one. For example, I could say that. 4, 4, z equals 3 minus 2x minus 3y, and then z equals 
3 fourths minus 1 half x minus 3 fourths y. And then plug that in into another equation and then try to get x in terms of y and then try to solve it. It would get very dicey very quick. Get very, very hard to solve. So in this situation, matrix math makes it easy to solve. In physics, like crystal structures, you have millions upon millions of, uh, let's say, um, a, a, a lattice with nodes. You know, they have, let's say, a crystal has a cubic structure. And all of the all of the atoms reside at the corners of a cube and and these just go on for ever because you've you got uh, millions and billions of atoms in uh, in a crystal and you want to know what the electric effects are, the, the, the electric force, because uh, the electric force is proportional to 1 over the square of the distance between things. And um, like many laws in physics, uh, they're inverse square laws. This is called an inverse square law. And you want to look at, well, you know, the, the effects, the cumulative effects of the force of atoms on this atom from way off. You know, this, this atom is going to have a stronger effect on that atom. This, this is going to have less, and that one's going to have even less. But they all have some kind of cumulative effect on this atom and you've got billions and billions of atoms at the corners of these crystal lattices and you want a you want a way of calculating what that composite force might be and so it, it just becomes very cumbersome and that's why they need supercomputers to do these numerical calculations and they use matrix math in order to solve these systems of equations and uh, again, as, as we saw, these things, uh, let's say n factorial, you got uh, a million uh, crystals in a very, very small piece. And the number of equations you got to solve are a million factorial. I mean, that, that's a big number. Have you ever thought about what a million factorial might be? It, it's beyond comprehension. I, I couldn't conceive of a number like that. So um, you, you need a, a very, I mean, matrix math uh, helps uh, solve problems, but also you need computers once you get beyond a certain size uh, of systems of equations to solve. So here in this case, I want to set up a, a matrix. I want to find its determinant first. So the determinant is going to be 2, 1, 3, uh, 3, negative 1, negative 2, and minus 4, 5, minus 1. Okay, that's our matrix. And we're going to try and find the determinant. So we're going to do it the right way. All right, we're going to look at the minors. So we got 2 times the minor. Okay, the minor is minus 1, minus 2, 5, minus 1. And then this one is minus 3 times, okay, 1, 3, 3, and 5, 
you know, I'm going to I'm going to write this smaller so that you can it all fits and looks neat. All right. So let's rewrite this so I can give myself some room. That's part of the problem. This is a small board. So let's look at the we want to get the determinant. So we got two, one and three. We got three minus one minus two. I got minus four, five, and minus one. And we're going to look at the at the minors to get the determinant. So the determinant is going to be equal to two times minus one, minus two, five, minus one, minus three. Okay, one, three, five, minus 1. Lastly, minus 4. This is plus, minus, plus, remember. And because we've got a minus 4 there, that multiplies against this. And so we got 1, minus 1, 3, minus 2. And all we have to do is the calculation. So that's equal to, the determinant is equal to 2 times, okay, well, call it that determinant is equal to 2 times, minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. Uh, this is negative, uh, neg negative 10, and it's minus, so that's plus 10. Okay, so we got minus 3 times minus 1 and minus 15. And then we have minus 4 times minus 2 and plus 3. Okay, because that's minus, minus 3 which is plus 3. Plus, we have a minus out there, so that's why we got to, it's like budgeting. We got to really track our signs. This is where it's really important to track our signs. So here, we got 2 times 11 minus 3 times negative 16 minus 4 times 1. And that's equal to 22 plus what's, I think that's 48, 18, 48 plus 48, and that's minus 4. Did I do that right? 48, 22, that's 10, 7, 7 minus 4 is 66. That's our determinant. So our determinant is 66. According to my calculations here, let's just do it one way, one more way. My, my little three by three trick, because it's actually a little easier math to do. Um, two, one, three. 3 minus 1 minus 2 minus 4 5 minus 1 2 1 3 3 minus 1 minus 2 okay so that's minus 1 minus 1 is 2 plus okay uh, 6 or that's 9 times 5 is 45 plus 45 Okay, 15 times 3, yeah, it's 45. Uh, this is, again, that's a positive. Uh, that is 8. Now we got our negative, so that's uh, 12. And this is 10, 20, so that's minus 20. And this is minus 3. So what do we have here? Here we got 10 and 45, that's 55. 
um, minus 12 plus 20 plus 3. So we have 75 minus 12. That's uh, 3. 63 plus 3 is 66. So we did it right. That's a big determinant. All right, so our determinant is 66. I just like to check myself. It's good to it's good to check yourself in math because it's so easy to make a simple error. Uh, I I work for a company that um, manufactured uh, chemicals, and uh, in one of the uh, design uh, calculations for the production. Uh, one of the engineers got a decimal place off. And they ended up sizing the production operation a whole order of magnitude bigger than they needed. And for this particular product, uh, they, they had so much manufacturing capacity that they shut. Once they opened up the factory, they shut it down within three months because they had so much product in stock. That they that they <laughs> had more than what the market would do. So uh, you know it's good to check your calculations over and over. And if you if you do it, then have somebody else check it also. I always used to have uh, a colleague check check my um, calculations over because I I can make uh, uh, errors just as well as anybody. I mean even though I I know this stuff. It's uh, it's it's simple to make uh, a mistake. So our determinant is sixty six. So now we want to solve for x. So in the first column here in our determinant, remember our determinant matrix. We got two, one, three, uh, three minus one minus two and minus four, five minus one. Uh, we replace in this column, we replace those with 3, 1, 6 right here. And then we do our calculation, our matrix calculation. So I'm going to use our trick because it's faster. Six. It's a nice little trick for 3 by 3. So here we got 1 times 3 uh, equals 3. This is 30 times 3 plus 90. Okay, that's 30 times 3 is 90. Uh, this is 8 plus 8. And now we have our negative side. That's positive, so that's uh, 24. This is minus 10, 30, minus 30, and we got minus 3. So now we add those numbers up. We got 98, 101, 101, right? 98, 3 is 101. We got minus uh, plus 30, minus 24, uh, plus 3. Okay, so this is 131 uh, plus 3, 134, minus 24 is 110. And so x equals 110 over 66. That is our x value. See how fast we got that? Now we want our y value. Two, one, three. So in our y column, we put three, one, six. Three, one, six. Okay, let's put three up here, a little neater. Okay, so. Now we rewrite these last two columns, 2, 1, 
3 and 3, 1, 6. Okay, so we got minus 1, so we got negative 2. We've got uh, 9 times 5 is uh, 45, plus 45. And we have minus 24. Now we look at the negative side. We got 12, minus 12. We got 30 times 2 is 60, plus 60. Uh, and we've got uh, minus 3. And so uh, this is our determinant, or, well, not exactly. This is for the y. We'll call it y prime. Okay, so we have uh, minus 26. So 45, 45 minus 26, 15, 3. Uh, that is 9, and this is 1, so this is uh, equal to 19 plus 12 minus 60 plus 3. So let's uh, get those numbers added. So we have uh, 19 and 12, that's uh, 11, 31, and 3 is 34. 60 minus 34, 10, 5, okay, that's 6 and 2. So y, y equals 26 over 66. So right now this is our number, y equals 26 over 66. Now we only have one more variable. Really what we should be doing uh, is reducing these to the least common denominator. I haven't done that yet. I'll save that for last. Right now I just want to get the, the values for x, y, and z. Now, we want this here, 3 minus 1 minus 2. Uh, this column, we re take the z column and we replace it with 3, 1, 6. And we got 2, 1, 3. Um, all right. That's going to be 3 minus 1 minus 2. All right. So that's neg determinant. Well, let's say z z prime is equal to minus 12 uh, plus 9 uh, plus 6 minus, all right, this is uh, minus 9 uh, minus 4, and this is plus 18. And now we just do our, our addition. So this is 21, uh, 27, that's 27, uh, minus uh, 13, plus, uh, or plus 13, and minus 18. Okay, so we got, that's uh, 27 and 13 is 10, carry the 40. Minus 18, 40 minus 18, 40 minus 18, that's 10, 3, 2, 2, minus 22, so z equals minus 22 over 66. Now we can always put these in lower denominations because we can, I mean, I see right off the bat that 2 is a common, common factor for all of these, but uh, oh, let's see, 1, 1, 10, uh, let's see, 2 into 66 is uh, leaves 33, so 33 is a prime number, we can't reduce it, uh, yes we can, we can uh, multiply 3 into 11, let's see 11 into 110, let's take a look at 11 into 110, uh, that is 1, and 0, uh, zero, that's 10. 
So 11 into 10. So x is equal to 10, uh, 6. And we can further reduce that to 2. Uh, that would be equal to 5 thirds. So x is equal to 5 thirds. So we've reduced it from 1, 10 over 66 to 5 thirds. Why? Okay, 26 is 66. I think we, 26, I think we can only divide by 2 there. Uh, 26, 2, uh, that's 13. It leaves a prime number. So 2 into 66 is, uh, I think, 33. So we got 13 33s, 13 33rds. And that's the smallest we can go because uh, 13 is a prime number. And z, um, we got, again, uh, we got 11, a factor of 11 that goes into that. So uh, we've got 2, negative 2, 6. Uh, that's equal to negative 1 third. So z is negative 1 third. So we have 5 thirds. One, uh, negative one third. We have five thirds, 13 30 thirds, and one negative one third. And those are our answers. And you can see how matrix math made that possible. If I tried to substitute uh, these variables in terms of other variables, it would have been, I, I'd be here still messing around with the with the z variable. So uh, you can see the utility of uh, matrix mathematics, especially uh, you can appreciate it when you have uh, large, large numbers of uh, equations that you've got to solve or large numbers that you're going to be dealing with. And again, also, um, matrices are uh, used to represent vectors. And also, it comes in very handy. Uh, when we solve uh, partial differential equations uh, for eigenvalues. Uh, that's something that you don't know anything about yet, but is uh, something that's associated with uh, uh, mathematics of a higher order of what they call linear or ordinary differential equations. So uh, partial differential equations uh, is... Uh, probably the highest level of calculus, and uh, you, you've got problems like the heat equation uh, that are uh, very famous. Uh, Einstein's uh, field equations, are partial differential equations, Maxwell equations are um, partial differential equations, and they yield vectors. And uh, another type of math called tensors, which are basically vectors. Um, with more dimensions rather than just three. Uh, a, a tensor uh, includes a time uh, variable. So, uh, at least in, in physics. Okay, so uh, at this point, I think I'm going to call it quits. And uh, I, I know I packed a lot into this video, but matrix math is not my favorite math. And uh, I just basically wanted to introduce it to you so you had some exposure to it uh, before we uh, start working on, on uh, calculus. And that's where I think our next step is going to be uh, is in, uh, <clears throat> in learning uh, what a what a uh, differential is. We're going to start differential calculus. There are two forms of calculus. Uh, they're uh, intimately related. Uh, that is uh, differential calculus and uh, integral calculus. So uh, we'll be looking at, at both of them. So uh, this is Mathman. Wish you all the best.